sing our responsive introit or reflection on the beautiful prologue that begins the Gospel of John. Eternal Word with God from the beginning, in whom and through whom everything has come to be. In you, the light that is our light, the light that shines on in the darkness, which the darkness has become. The true light enlightening us all, shining in the world. You came to your own people, and we knew you not. You came to your own home, and we received you not. But to those who did receive you, who believed in your name, you gave power to become your children, to be known as your servants and your friends, for not of the will of flesh and blood, but of the desire of your love. Living word of light and love, you were made flesh, you came to dwell among us, full of grace and truth, we saw your glory, divine glory shining through a human face, as a mother's eyes live through her daughters, as a son reflects his father's image, your glory in the human being fully alive. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Pray together. Almighty God, and to whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. And write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given us thy only begotten Son to take our nature upon him and as at this time to be born of a pure virgin. Grant that we, being regenerate and made thy children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by thy Holy Spirit. Through the same our Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the same Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we have the first reading. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. 
Clouds and darkness are around without you, O Lord. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne. A fire goes before you and burns up your enemies on every side. Your lightnings light up the world. The earth sees it and is afraid. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare your righteousness, and all the people see your glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before the Lord, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil, preserving the lives of the saints and delivering them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joyful gladness for those who are true-hearted. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to the holy name of the Lord. You're welcome to stand as able as we prepare to hear the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is written in the second chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at verse 1. Glory to thee, O Lord. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went down to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea into the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. <laughs> Let us ponder and respond in faith to page 71. Say together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and, and of all, all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, 
through whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven, and is sitting on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come to glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who from the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let me throw out a proposition, not entirely mine, but one that I first thought about quite a few years after reading a book published by Upper Room titled, Too Much Holly, Not Enough Holy, <laughs> Searching for Christmas. It's a one-year diary, starting one year at Epiphany, the end of one Christmas, and the writer, Patricia Wilson, shares her struggles throughout the year as she seeks to find the holiness needed to counteract all of the window dressing around the next Christmas. Window dressing that obscures the holy life so much holy. And she concludes that to celebrate Christmas, one has to live the Christmas spirit every day of the year. And that too is my proposition or thesis for this Christmas Day sermon. The New Testament has only two Christmas stories, and that is stories of the events around the actual birth of Jesus, not just his ancestry or his conception. And those are those that you find in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. And to be picky about it, the Matthew story is really the epiphany story. And it deals with events perhaps 18 to 20 months after the actual birth. Mark's Gospel totally ignores the birth of Jesus and writes only of his adult ministry. And John, of course, is something else entirely, not mentioning the birth of Jesus at all, but beginning with the great hymn to the eternal word, the light of the world, that came into the world with Jesus. Luke and Matthew, in the popular imagination, thanks largely to countless Christmas crashes, large and small, public and private, and of course greeting cards, have been blended together into one story, all happening on one night about 2,000 years ago. Along with adding some details, such as oxen, donkeys, lambs, camels, and other animals, that are actually from some non-biblical stories about the birth of Jesus, or from pure imagination, like drummer boys. The beginning of the Gospel of John, the hymn to the word of the light, was paraphrased in that intro at the beginning of the service. And it tells us of the universal meaning of the birth of Jesus. John's hymn, of course, has been totally marginalized and ignored in the popular Christmas story. Now, I'm normally quite strict about not merging or mooching together biblical texts from different sections of the Bible. But if Hallmark can do it, I can do it. And if they object to me bringing in the most important gospel, John, into the story, I guess they can sue me. So let me reflect on Luke's and Matthew's stories and John's hymns as we once again begin to journey through the church year and seek to live in the spirit of Christmas every day. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, 
and without him not one thing came into being. And Luke writes, And Mary gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. The limitless power of the Word of God, through whom all that exists was created, comes into the world as a baby, born not into a palace, not even into a Middle Eastern inn, but in a stable, and this eternal word finds its first resting place in a cattle feed trough. John writes, what has come into being with him was life, and the light was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And consider how Luke tells the same story. Then an angel of the Lord stood before the shepherds, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. If we understood the meaning of this light, the light that shines into our darkness, a light which the darkness of our sin and despair cannot overcome, have we been terrified? Have we stood in awe before the glory of the Lord, the Lord who is with us? John writes, the true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. And in Matthew's Gospel, we read of the Magi and of King Herod. Then Herod sent the Magi to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. We, of course, know the story, and we know that Herod's intentions were not honorable. He meant to kill the child. But have we too not recognized the light that has come into the world? Have we, been, have we too been too busy with our own lives and failed to recognize the light that is the light of our world? Or worse, are we so taken up with our own agenda, somewhat like Herod, our own importance, that we feel threatened by this act of God entering into history and like Herod, at best seek to ignore, or at worst want to do away with the light, which is Christ within us. St. John continues, He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. While St. Luke's Gospel reads, telling of events about eight days later after the birth of Jesus, quoting the words of the aged Simeon to Mary, this child is destined for the failing and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. The rejection of the Lord is still a fact today. We don't need to look far for those who reject him. And they're not only outside the church, but even among those who are baptized into his name. We needn't fault those outside the church. We do need to examine ourselves. Have we rejected the light? Because we do not accept the way of that light, but the way that is towards servanthood and the cross. Babies in mangers with adoring shepherds and angels all around, and maybe even drummer boys, are good enough, but are we prepared to accept serving our neighbors and walking towards a cross, whatever that means for us, which that baby in the time accepted and asked of us to do? But we didn't know at our baptism that those were part of the bargain we were making with Christ. Nobody told us we protest. Nevertheless, if we reject the servanthood and the cross, we reject the light. But there is nevertheless hope for us. St. John concludes, From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Even if we don't want to serve, even if we hesitate to follow to the cross, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. Salvation is ours because salvation is only available to sinners. Those who are perfect have no need of salvation, 
but we who are imperfect, even if we're so imperfect as to re reject the light of the world and the cross towards which it leads us, we have the grace of Christ to save us. We are the people of God. We know that we are imperfect, but we are the people of God. We're once again beginning the 12 days of Christmas, even though the world will declare that Christmas ends today with the last turkey carved. I pray that we will continue Christmas throughout the year ahead, knowing the power that is ours as baptized daughters and sons of God. I pray that we will live the spirit of Christmas every day of the year, even though the festivities stop today. I pray that we will become instruments of God's dominion, become real in our world. The light continues to shine in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it yet. And we are the keepers of that light. Amen. Brethren, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. Let's stand as able, and we have a hymn number 131. And I think you can play it all the way through once first for us to get the, the tune. And the, it's very short, so we'll sing all three verses. Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. 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 Turning to page 75, you may remain standing or sit or kneel as we turn to our Lord in prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, 
and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness, so to guide and direct their governors and rulers that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. Grant unto thy servant Elizabeth, our queen, to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to thy servant Todd, our bishop, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and living word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence we may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity especially those for whom our prayers are desired. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants depart to this life in thy faith and fear. We may bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, beseeching thee to give us grace that Rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow their good examples, and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God and walking through henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ make maker of all things, judge of all people, we may acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy on upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus, for his sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life. To the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ said unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also, as St. John said, If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us come up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, Creator and Preserver of all things. Because thou didst give Jesus Christ, thine only Son, to be born as at this time for us, who, by the operation of the Holy Spirit, was made very man of the substance of the Virgin Mary, his mother, 
and that without spot of sin, to make us clean from all sin. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and did in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee, in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life, and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this Holy Communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, Grant us thy peace.
voices together again in song, hymn number 148, verses 1 and 5. You're welcome to stand as able. upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. We turn to our leaflet for ascending acclamation. Last page. See what love the Father has given us. That we should be called the children of God. You are my sons and daughters. This day I have begotten you. See what love the Father has given us. As many as received him, to them he gave power to become the children of God. See what love the Father has given us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before our last hymn, which is number 135, verses 1 and 2, I wanted to ask um, Gloria, Maya, and Victor, so glad you're here. I tire out easily these days, and I could use your help to extinguish the candles. So after the service, I'll meet you right up front, and we'll put out all these candles together. Let's turn in song as we go on our joyful way, number 135.